Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can use the uh, Oracle built-in uh, backup utility that comes bundled with the with the Oracle installation. So it's it's a great tool. Uh, it's free of charge, and it's well, it's as I see it, the really recommended way to take a ba backup on an Oracle database. Uh, Backups in Oracle can be done in two ways. Uh, it's something called a hot backup and a cold backup. A hot backup is where you take the backup when the database is running. And that's probably the case that you would like to do it in most cases, most scenarios. And then you have the cold backup scenario. That is where you have to, to shut down the database before you can take an actual backup of the system. Uh, of course, pros and cons everywhere. Um, I'm going to show you here how you can make a hot backup using the RMAN utility. Okay, uh, the RMAN uh, binary, it's located in your Oracle home. Uh, you have to set this parameter first. Uh, should be if somebody has installed the system already uh, should have been set up already otherwise you have to do a export uh, oracle underscore home equals and then the full path to the uh, to the oracle home of this and uh, if we do echo oracle home you should get the same string um, and if you're doing this in Windows, it's set instead of um, instead of export. Same thing. Uh, and then you might have to set up your Oracle SID as well. Uh, same thing there. Uh, export. Oh. Export. No. But export Oracle. SID equals, uh, in this case, it's ProDB01. And then again for Windows, it's set instead of export. Um, yeah, the ARM and binary is located here. Uh, uh, this is all the binaries that, uh, it's not all of the binaries, but most of the binaries that you will use is located in this. Uh, in this folder uh, is the Oracle Home underscore bin. Same in Windows. Uh, here, here it is. Uh, and to use the the Armen utility, you simply type in Armen, and then you say target, and that is the target database that you're going to use. In this case, we're going to use just uh, this one. Since we have the Oracle seed set up already, you could uh, do like this as well. Sys, if you want to use your password or if you don't have uh, access to the Oracle account, uh, sys, user sys, password Oracle, and the, uh, the, teen, uh, the Oracle seed name, uh, ProDB01. That would be the same thing as doing this in this case. But that is since I'm logged in as the Oracle user and I, the Oracle user by default has access to the system account. Okay, look at that. We are connected to the target database called ProDB01 with the database ID very long number um, and this tool uh, first we can show uh, list all no show all this is the Armen configuration uh, this is the default configuration as you can see here uh, default 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 I haven't changed anything uh, and if you're setting up a backup environment, you should probably change some of these to 
whatever, like this one, maybe should not be stored in the org home, uh, the retention policy. Uh, in this case, redundancy one, just keep one copy of the, of the backup. You might want to have like 30, so you can make a rollback to a backup from the last 30 days. Uh, backup optimization, sorry, backup optimization, that's a, a cool feature that was introduced in 11, I think. Uh, it does a lot of things, but I think the most important thing is that it does not take a backup uh, of any files that has already been backed up and hadn't had any change done in it. So for instance, if you've got a um, uh, a table space in set in read only mode, uh, then it will never do a backup except for the first backup. So that's a very convenient parameter. Anyway, I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, they are very well documented on the Oracle uh, docs.oracle.com. Uh, But a simple backup, it's really, really easy to do. Backup, database, oops. That's basically the only thing you need to do. Uh, then it will store the database in the default installation, uh, Oracle Home folder. Uh, but I like to store it somewhere else because I'm running a bit low on disk there. So I'm using format uh, or uh, backup, uh, the name, this is, uh, oops, D, this percent D is actually the name of the database and this would be the uh, uh, a sequence number for the backup. So doing this will take a full backup of the database and store the data files, the backup sets under the Aura backup folder. And as you can see here, uh, oh, we wait. These are the data files that it will make it back up on the users, sys auxiliary, undo table space and the users table space. This is just a standard installation. Uh, I haven't added any data to this database except the, the data that was installed with the database. And here you can see uh, this piece handle or this file. Uh, contains these four data files. And then there is another piece as well. Uh, let's call this one. As you can see, 31 and 32, the, num uh, the sequence number. And this one contains the control file and the SP file. Uh, the control file, that's actually what the backup, the Armin reads to find this information on all the data files in the system. Uh, and the SP file, it's, it's a binary uh, parameter file that stores all the uh, startup uh, parameters. For instance, where it can find the actual control file and the, the config memory and uh, where to put the audit trails and uh, trace files, and et cetera, et cetera. Hmm. Uh, and another thing, uh, I'll take a talk about that later. Uh, all the information about all the backup and all the settings is stored, in this case, stored in a special section of the control file. So I just had a backup done here uh, and I can list backup, for instance. What it does, 
is that it's going to check in in this case the control file to see uh, a list of all the backup that is current uh, and I say that it stores this information in the control file yes that is true but in a bigger environment you might have to store them in a central repository or a central catalog uh, so you can connect to uh, Armen using a catalog database uh, I'll talk to that with you about that later but for now it just uses the control file and as you can see here the backup set ID number three the size it's just one gigabyte it's not compressed uh, the name of the um, of the piece and then there is backup set number four, size, uh, well, nine megabytes, same. So if we exit here and we go to the Aura backup here, you should have two files here. Yeah, here they are. Um, and this is a complete full backup. However, this is just a backup of the data files. If you also like to take up a backup of the, of the archive logs, uh, <clears throat> first of all, the database has to be in archive log mode. Uh, archive log list. Uh, if if it's not in uh, archive log mode, you have to enable it first. Uh, uh, if you don't know how to do that, I've got a guide on my on my web page because uh, I'm not going to go through that right now. But it needs to be in archive log mode first before you can take a backup of the archive log because you don't have any archive logs if you don't put the database in archive log mode basically so uh, oops backup data base plus archive log So here you can see uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah, that was kind of stupid of me since I did not configure uh, any default uh, format f where to put the backups uh, and I did not say it when I uh, entered the command like I did last time, I just wrote uh, backup. We should have had the format and located the uh, the actual destination for the backups. So right now I put it in the in the Oracle home under the DBS location. Well, that's my mistakes, uh, and I do a lot of mistakes. <laughs> anyway, we're all done. So let's go to the Oracle underscore home. Um, uh, DBS this is yeah the DBS we should have um, 14 13 12 11 duk 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 and this is the uh, archive log as we can see here, the archive log has the sequence number 11 and the data file has sequence 11, 12, yeah, and the control file 13. So if we go back to Arman, again, 
lift back up. You can see first the first two backup sets that came from the previous, and they are, you can see a piece name where they are located. And then we got the, the rest, Oof. and the location of that. And this is the log of the archive logs that is currently contained within the backup set number five, SP file. Uh, and then this one is it actually does a, a log switch. Uh, and what that means is that it writes, it forces the system to write the redo logs down to the archive log and then make a final uh, archive log of the data that was contained in, inside the redo log. Well, that's very easy. We right now have, we made two backups and one, uh, one backup, full backup and one full backup with the including uh, archive logs. Uh, and it's also if you like to delete these or anything, uh, the only thing you have to do is delete delete no 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 doesn't look like delete backup ba -ba 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 -ba. yes oh done as you can see all these files are gone uh, and this they are still there that's because when I set this system up again, I didn't uh, I didn't set the parameter to where to to store the archive log. So this is all the archive logs that are located in the system. And this is this is really bad since I've done the installation in the root file system. And after time, this will probably fill up the the root file system. And if you work in Linux or Unix, you know that's a bad thing. So this needs to be moved. Well, that's it guys, that's basically what I was going to show you here today. So, cheers, bye.